Adobe recently released Firefly, the AI engine that's responsible for doing this in Photoshop. Awesome, right? Now, a secret insider at Adobe told me they're planning on cancelling Firefly because it's too limited in what it can do. Unless we can use it to create stunning transitions, Firefly will be removed from existence. So. Let's get to work. Transition number one. Here you can see two clips in the timeline. We're gonna zoom out for the first video and transform into the second one. But we can't do that because if we scale it down, we see these edges. Now, don't worry, that's where Firefly comes in. First, drag the playhead to the spot that you want the transition to start. Now, go to the program monitor and click the button editor. Then look for the export frame button and drag it between the other buttons. Then hit OK. Once you click it, you can give it a name and select the file type. Now, just save it somewhere on your computer. Now, remove everything on the right side of your playhead. Yet. We don't need it anymore. You'll understand why in a second. Next, you're gonna need Photoshop Beta. You can find it under Beta Apps in the Creative Cloud app. Once it's installed, open it up and drag this still frame into your workspace. Now on top, set the height and width to 50%. Everything you see that's empty now will be filled up by Firefly. Head over to the toolbar and click the Marquee tool. Now select the picture, but leave a small edge around it. Photoshop needs that information to calculate the, the fill the thing it's gonna fill up. Hit Control Shift plus I on your keyboard to invert the selection so that the empty part and the edges are selected. Click on Generate a Fill, leave it blank and click on Generate. Now just let Firefly do its job and when it's done, you have a much bigger picture than before. Great job, Firefly. I can't believe they wanna cancel you. Photoshop actually generated three different versions so you can pick the one that looks best for you. To export the picture, hit Control Shift Alt W. Then for the file type, a JPEG will be perfectly fine. Go all the way to the bottom and make sure the embed color profile is disabled. Otherwise, the colors will look different in Premiere. Click Export and let's get back to Premiere. Drag the JPEG in between the videos. The length depends on how long you want the duration to last. Head over to the Effects Library and find the Transform Effect. Drag it on the still image and go to the Effect Controls. Now, because we decreased the scaling in Photoshop, remember, we need to scale it back up to match the same size of the video. And to do that, set the scale to 200%. Now, click the playhead and move it to the first frame of the clip. Then go back to Scale and click the stopwatch icon to create a keyframe. Move further in time and set the scale back to 100. Next, we're gonna ease the animation. You can do that by right-clicking the keyframe and choosing Ease Out. Now, I want a little more control of the animation and to get that, expand the velocity curve of the scale property. Pull the lever of the first keyframe to ease out the animation. Then at the bottom, the animation will follow the shape you create. Then at the bottom, set the shutter angle to 180 degrees. That will introduce natural motion blur. Now we're done with the still image, but we're not done with the animation. Head over to the effect library and find the transform effect. Drag it on the second video and go to the effect control. Move the player to the first frame and head over to scale. Increase it to something around 300 and set a keyframe. Then move forward in time and set the scale back to 100. You can also just click the reset button. Again, open up the velocity curve, but this time pull on the lever of the last keyframe. That will let the animation ease in. Again, increase the shutter angle and that looks so awesome. Is that smoke coming out of you, Firefly? I'm gonna hand you over to Jordi. You're not my problem anymore. Oh, hey, Firefly. Let's go to number two. We're gonna create a pan transition where it looks like the camera is turning around. 180 degrees. Here we have two clips. Set the playhead to where you want the transition to start. Create a still by clicking the export frame button or just hit Ctrl Shift plus E on your keyboard. Again, remove everything from the right side of the playhead. Do the same thing for the first frame of the second video. Open up Photoshop again and import your picture. Again, set the size to 50% and move it all the way to the left. We're gonna let Photoshop generate more image on the right side. To do that, make a selection like you did with the last picture and hit Ctrl Shift plus I to invert that. Then click the Generate Fill button. Leave it blank and click Generate. There we go. Great job, Firefly. Now do the same thing for the still of your second video, but this time put it on the right side. Awesome. Now back to Premiere. Drag both stills in between the videos. Now go to the effects library and find the transform effect. Drag it on both the stills. Select the first one and head over to the effects controls. Grab the playhead and go to the first frame. Then set a position keyframe by clicking the stopwatch icon. Move the playhead all the way till the end of the clip and then move the position to the left side. Again, open up the velocity curve and pull the lever to ease out the first keyframe. And finally, increase the shutter angle to introduce motion blur. Next, go to the timeline and select the second clip. Head back to the effects controls and this time move to the end of the clip with your playhead. Set a position keyframe. Now grab the 
the playhead again and move to the first frame of your clip. Move the position of the video all the way to the right. Don't forget to ease the last keyframe. And again, increase the shutter angle to create motion blur. So now we have this very long push transition and now it's time for that 180 degree turn effect. So go to the project window and click the new item button. Create a new adjustment layer. Drag it on top of the still images and head over to the effects library. Then find the lens distortion effect and drag it onto the adjustment layer. Now we're using an adjustment layer because that way the animation is much easier as we don't need to create double animations. Head over to the effects controls, move the playhead to the start and set a curvature keyframe. Then move the playhead to the end of the clip and also set a curvature keyframe. Now take the playhead and place it in the middle of the clip. Decrease the curvature until you're satisfied. Once that is done, ease the keyframes and that's it. That looks awesome guys. Now wait a minute, what if we could use Firefly to generate AI art and then sell that? I mean, I'm not even kidding guys. With Wirestock, the sponsor of today's video, you can upload and sell your AI art on the world's largest marketplaces like Adobe Stock, Shutterstock, iStock and so many more. Or just straight from Wirestock. People can buy it from your portfolio and check out all the media details, including the type of license that you're selling. Now, of course, not only AI art can be sold, but regular stock photos and videos as well. Smartphones nowadays have amazing cameras, so to upload stock footage, there's no need to spend tons of money on a new DSLR. All you need to do is click the Uploads button. You can even upload straight from Google Drive or Dropbox, so don't worry about transferring your files between devices. And once it's uploaded, check if it's AI generated or not. Enable Sell on Marketplaces, and you can also sell from your portfolio. You can add a description if you like, and all that's left to do is click Post. I like to browse the Explore tab and check out other people's portfolios for inspiration. When you start selling, you can go to your dashboard and check your stats. You can even see exactly where your sales are coming from. Wirestock is saving you so much time and trouble by distributing that to all of these stock websites. And it doesn't cost you anything. Now, there is a paid subscription allowing you to upload more, but by using the code Premier, you can get 20% discount. So check out the link in the description down below to start making money. Oh my goodness, Firefly, what's happening to you? Looks like I've been using you a bit too much. You know what? You're going back to Timon. I'm starting to see why Adobe wants to cancel you. Oh no, Firefly, you're completely ruined. You know what? Here's some water. There you go. Let's move on to transition number three. This one you can use in travel videos when you're transitioning from a walk in the woods to a walk in the city, for example. Find a video that's shot ideally on a tripod. That way we only need one still frame. So create a still and put it in Photoshop. With the lasso tool, create a selection around the buildings because we don't want them. Click on generate fill and then generate. When it's done, you can pick the one that looks best for you. Now select the bottom layer and duplicate it by hitting Ctrl plus L. Drag it on top of the layers and then again select the lasso tool. Now select a small part of the village. Then to create a mask, click the mask icon. Now go to select and mask on top and in the right panel, increase the feather just a little bit to smooth it out. Now keep doing this until the entire village is visible. Once you're done, you should have all these parts separately. Export every layer one by one and then go back to Premiere. Put all of your images on top of the clips like this. Select the cuts in between and hit Ctrl plus D on your keyboard. That will apply the default cross dissolve transition. And now the transition looks like this. Beautiful. Now, transition four. For this transition, you need two videos that have a similar shape already, just like these two. First, head over to Photoshop and open up an empty project. Press Ctrl plus A to select the entire workspace. Then just click Generate Fill and type in something like Black Wavy Shapes Abstract or something. Try to generate something like this. As long as it isn't too detailed, you're fine. Now save the picture and put it in Premiere. Okay, back to these two videos. Move the second video on top of the first one. Let it overlap for just a few frames. Then set a cut on the first and the second video. Bring the the second one back to the first video track and now find the abstract picture from Photoshop and drag it on top of the two clips. Now go to the effect library and find the track mat effect. Drag it on both the videos. Select the first video and in the effect controls set the track mat to the track where the abstract picture is. Then set the composite to mat luma and reverse it. On the second clip do exactly the same but don't reverse it. Now select the picture and scale it up a lot. Once you did that go to the effect library, find the lens distortion effect and drag it on the picture. We're gonna use that effect to create motion. It would be boring otherwise, right? Head over to the effect controls and move the playhead to the first frame of the clip. Then set a keyframe for every property on the lens distortion. Move forward in time again and tweak the values until you find a movement that you like. You know, it's personal preference. Now, 
back to Jordan. Are you okay, Firefly? You don't want to be cancelled, right? I hope you can keep it up with the next transition. Number five. Here I have two completely different clips, but I want the transition to be smooth. We're gonna match them by using Adobe Firefly to create airplane wrecks on the bottom of the ocean. That way, we can create a match cut from the first to the second video. And to do that, select a clip and move the playhead to where you want the transition to start. Press M to set a marker on the clip. Now take a still, then move a couple of frames forward and create another still. Press M again to set another marker. Now keep doing that until you have around 10 stills. Now open up the first one in Photoshop. With the lasso tool, select a spot in the ocean where you want a plane rack to be. Then click Generative Fill and type in something like Wrecked Airplane on the bottom of the ocean or something like that. Now when you export it, call it Frame 1 for example, because we need them to be in the same order we save them in. Do this for all the stills you created and put them in Premiere. Now snap the stills one by one to the markers that we created. I also blend the original plane inside the last ocean still. That way the match cut will be smoother. And now the transition looks like this. Awesome. Crap! Firefly is about to explode. Oh, we can arrange its funeral already. Oh wait, is that Jason Levine? He knows what to do with Firefly. Wow, thanks Jason. Now Adobe Firefly isn't the only AI tool that you need to keep up with nowadays. Take advantage of these tools here on my left and become a better video editor. Thank you so much for watching and as always, stay creative.